revelation would be upon each and every one of us tonight. And I want to thank you, Lord, that you would allow our eyes of our heart be enlightened with understanding of the greatness of what you want to do in us, that you might do something through us. And I thank you for that now in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to bring our attention to Isaiah 55, starting with 8 and 9. Isaiah 55, 8 and 9. If you're going to walk in the Spirit, we've been talking about learning to walk in the Spirit, learning to live in the Spirit. And it's a learning process. And so we see, for my thoughts, now God's talking. Now how do we know that that's God's talking? Somebody tell me. Right, Mike's got it. My, capital M, that's my, that's God. Come on in, Doris, good to see you. For my thoughts, God's thoughts are not your thoughts. Well, Lord, they, our thoughts ought to be his thoughts. If we have a new, re, uh, brand new, my, renewed mind, then our thoughts should be. But we start out with, and God says, listen, my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. Now that tells me a lot right there. Next verse, nine. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, that's a long ways up there, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Now I want you to turn to 1 Corinthians. Let's start with uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 19 and 20. I'm going to take my time because I want, I want to build a picture for you, so don't fall asleep on me or fall out of the chair. Listen to what i got to say. I think it's going to be helped a little bit tonight. For it is written, now, I've said this before. Why is that phrase in there, for it is written? Somebody tell me. So we didn't know. Hmm? All right. No. Right. So, for it is written, they don't know where it was written. But it was written over in the Bible in the Old Testament. Are oh, you see that? See, today we have chapters and we have verses. But when that was written, they didn't have them. The original Greek, which the New Testament was written in, and the original, the Hebrew, which the Old Testament. So they would say, they know it was in the Bible, but how do you find it? You ain't got no chapters, no verses. And so they had to say, well, it is written. I will baffle and render useless and destroy the learning of the learnt and the philosophies of the philosophers and the cleverness of the clever and the discernment of the discerning. I will frustrate and nullify them and bring them to nothing. What is God saying? The lost man. When your children go to uh, college and you got a professor there, he's teaching worldly knowledge. He don't know if he's not saved, he doesn't know anything about God, but he'll say, well, I don't believe there is a God. Well, I wouldn't even listen to that man. Are you out there? I would not listen to that man because I know that he thinks that because he thinks he's so wise. And what does God say? He'll flusterate him, nullify them, bring them to nothing. How many of you understand what I'm talking about? <clears throat> Same thing with the preacher. Somebody's preaching up here. Well, I don't believe uh, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is for the day, or I don't believe healing is for the day, or I don't believe in the cross. Of course, about that time, I'm already up here. <laughs> I said, brother, I want you to sit out there for a while. I want to teach you the word of God. <clears throat> so you're going to meet people. Now, what I want you to do, is just hold what you got right there. And I want you to uh, turn, let's see, I want the, the, the scripture. 
I want uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3 up there. All right? 1 Corinthians chapter 3, we'll start with verse 1. Because somebody's coming up to you with all this philosophy and all of this worldly wisdom, right away you know God's going to bring them to nothing. So don't get all excited. All right, look at this. Now, Paul is dressed in the Christians. He says, however, brethren, I could not talk to you as to spiritual men, but as to non-spiritual men of the flesh. When you see flesh, you can also remember the same word is used for, for, the, for the fleshly mind or the flesh we see here. It's the same word. They are carnally minded. You understand that? Now, we all have been carnally minded. Our minds are in the process of being renewed. If you stop believing the philosophies of men and start believing the wisdom of God, that's how you get a renewed mind. Let me say this. The more your mind is renewed, the more you're going to hear God. The more you're going to understand the word of God. Are you listening? Very important to get our minds renewed. Well, Bob, how do you get your mind renewed? You start believing what God says. You, be, you begin to believe in his wisdom. Now, remember, his thoughts are far beyond ours. So some of the things that he says is like, the natural man goes like, what? Given to be given unto you, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give unto you. That's not natural philosophy. That's not the, the, the philosophies of the world. The, the philosophies of the world is you get, 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 get as much as you can. You just keep getting. And the Bible, the thoughts of God said, no, you give, 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 and it'll be given unto you. That don't make sense. It ain't sense. That's God's thoughts. That's how God thinks about it. All right, I'll give you an example. There's Brother Jimmy over there. You know Jimmy, don't you? Now, he's only going to plant one acre of corn. But now there's Brother Jones over there. He's going to plant 10 acres of corn. But he's got to give more seeds out there for those 10 acres then over here, Jimmy, he's just going to put enough seeds in one acre. Now, which one is going to give more? That over that side. And who, which one's going to get more on that side? Now, that's God's thinking. The more you sow, the more you get. Well, I'm going to keep the rest of this for myself, yeah, and starve because you ain't going to give up one acre of corn. And you wonder why you're never pro pro progressing. You never progress. See, God's ways are different than man's ways. And we have to understand that. When I begin to learn and read the scriptures about how God takes simple things to confound the wise. I mean, how simple could this be? The guy, you know, I've mentioned this before. But you, the man's blind. He can't see nothing. And what does Jesus do? I mean, he takes the dirt. He spits in it. And puts it in the man's eyes and rubs it in there with his thumbs. Now go down to uh, the, the, the pond or the lake or the, so, the saloon or the uh, pool of saloon and wash and he sees. Remember I talked about Gideon? Can you imagine heaven? We have 32,000 people. Boy, we really, hallelujah, got to break out the back of the church. We've got to build more here, more there and everything. And say, God, no, 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 wait a minute. No, 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 no. Too many people. Got a whole bunch of people, got a bunch of confusion. Get rid of, pfft. I forgot how many, I think it was uh, 20,000. Then get rid of another 10,000, end up with just 300. 300. Look at the wisdom of God. One seed and his name is Jesus. The seed of the woman came forth and millions of people upon millions of people have been saved by that one seed. That one seed, that's the wisdom of God. 
and through the foolishness how would you hide a camel in the desert <laughs> the thing where did that come from <laughs> I mean, God takes the simple things. It's all in the scripture. Now, let's finish reading this. However, brethren, I could not talk to you as to spiritual men, but as to unspiritual men of the flesh. Now, he's talking to Christians, talking to the Christians. Now, I want you to think about it. You, let's just say the church is full of people. How many of them are still unspiritual no need to get all uptight about it well did you see what what he said yeah i know he said it because he's unspiritual he's still carnal his mind hasn't been renewed yet well let's kick him out of the church no you don't kick him out of the church you that are stronger are to bear with the scruples and the weakness of the weak and don't let it bother you what do you expect out of a baby? I said, mess up the diaper every time. So what do you do? Throw the baby out? I may have to throw this at a DV boy, but I, I, let's have a little fun tonight. I was taking care of one of my granddaughters one time. I know it was my great granddaughter. Susan and they all went out and there I am with my Great granddaughter, she's just still got diapers on, and boy, I mean, she really did a job. You know what I mean? Of course, none of you out there have ever experienced that. So what I do, I undo the diaper first. She's a kicking, doing the rumble dumble, you know. And then, but the, the clean diapers over there, and the powders over there, and everything I need is over there. So how do I leave her? Because she, I'm in my front room on the carpet. And she's gonna spread, she's gonna paint my front room. <laughs> what a predicament to be in. So I, I'm trying to hold her down and get over there, run away, get, get the, well, I remember that. You know? But I didn't throw her away. <laughs> I didn't bow breed her. Be, well, that's a good one, bow breed her. I didn't beat her up. You just clean them up powder them and they make them smell good a while and say well now the, you know you're going to grow you're going to mature you know get in your word get in the bible let the cross cut you'll grow that's what we have to do with christian people hello are you out there all right now let's finish reading this in whom the carnal nature notice this predominates i it's not easy for me to discern. I can tell what a person is allowing their, their, their natural uh, carnal flesh dominate them because they're going to think a certain way, they're going to act a certain way, they're going to react a certain way. It's no puzzle to me whatsoever. Just like the little baby. I think uh, that diaper stayed on her for about uh, an hour. Next thing I know, I smelled something. And, but I tell you, the next time I had everything right there, right beside me and I took it off cleaned her up powdered it up and hallelujah what do you expect out of a baby well that's the way it is with a carnal person they're going to gossip they're going to talk they're going to they're going to be just well you know the record we've all been there but we don't we ain't there no more right amen, amen. that's a good preaching our day all right look As to mere infants, look what Paul says, Christians as mere infants. <clears throat> How many times I would take them and change their diaper. And I said, now this is what you got to do. Okay. All right. It's very simple. It's not complicated, but I'm not putting you down. You're just a baby. And don't say that. You'll insult them. I'm not a baby. What are you talking about? I'm not a baby. <clears throat> well, you just showed it. <laughs> You're carnal. Paul's talking to the Corinthian church. Someone says, boy, I'd like to have the first century church being the first. No, you don't. Have you read the Bible? <laughs> have you read this Bible about the first church? Huh? 
Paul had to turn some of them over to the devil. <laughs> Carnal. Gossiping. Complaining. Oh, a, a, a carnal Christian is the worst complainer you've ever seen. Complain. Murmur. <clears throat> I read in Corinthians, uh, Paul says, don't be like the, uh, the, <clears throat> the children of Israel complaining and murmuring. How many knows what happened to it because they did it? Huh? Yeah, you remember. Yeah, yeah. Wasn't good. Wasn't good at all. So scratch that. <clears throat> But God is grace is so wonderful. Aren't you glad that God's grace was sufficient when you were, when you were just a little baby, but now you're, you're moving into your spirit being now, your spirit people. You know how to love one another. Uh, you know how to help each other out. Uh, you, you, never, you never talk about one another. You pray for one another. See, that shows you've grown. You've matured. Now you're a spirit being. Now that you're a spirit being... <clears throat> Turn to uh, Romans 15, 1. Now that you're a spirit being. That's backwards. Yeah, <clears throat> now that you're a spirit being. All right, let's read that. Now that we're all spirit beings, and, and we who are, now we're strong, and we're spirit beings, uh, uh, we have convictions and, uh, and we have a robust faith. And, uh, but being that we have that, Paul says, now you got to bear with the failings and the frailties and the tender scruples of the weak. You remember over 1 Corinthians there, chapter 3, the, the carnal? Remember the carnal, the non spiritual? What is your attitude to be? You bear. Everybody say bear. bear. Yeah, that's the bearings that the church runs on. Bearing. Bear with the failings and the frailties and the tender scruples of the weak. Sometimes I counsel with people and I have to say, <clears throat> well, in this situation, until God changes it, you're just going to have to bear. <laughs> How many knows what a bear is? Now, I'm not talking about that bear out there in the woods. I'm talking about bear, you just bear. <laughs> How about this? Paul told the Corinthians, why not suffer wrong? What? Suffer wrong? Are you kidding? Don't you know who I am? Oh, I forgot, I'm, I'm spiritual. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to blow it there. Yeah, yeah. Am I coming through, church? Yes. All right, now you might see, we want to see ourselves in the message. <clears throat> God tells us to show hospitality. Greet the brothers with a holy kiss. Let's move from there. We are to help carry the doubts and the squirms of others and not please ourselves. What? Not please ourselves? Are you kidding? Oh, I'm spiritual. I forgot. <laughs> Does some churches preach the gospel? <laughs> That's the gospel. Not to Go to the next verse. Fifteen two. Each one of us. Everybody say each one of us. Each one of us. All right, listen. Make it a practice to please ourselves. No. Huh? No. Make it a practice to please and make happy his neighbor yes. for his good and for his true welfare and to edify him and to strengthen him and to build him up spiritually.
I'm going to get back to John 3, 16. Anybody seeing themselves in the message yet? Good or bad? Now, we fail. All, not, I ain't going to say we fail. But there is times we fail. <laughs> Can I tell you one of my experiences of life? And you might be able to identify with it. Years ago, we worked with this woman and her son. And I mean, I think Susan and me spent mo our own money. We did everything and we loved them and we tried to get them to grow and mature. But they were determined to stay carnal. But anyway, they left after about four years here at the Shield and didn't pay much attention to anything I taught and they stayed carnal. But we still loved them and we didn't show no respect of persons. Well, one day, she shows up uninvited to my house. And being a carnal Christian, I mean, being a spiritual Christian, <laughs> No, here's the first thing. The first thing, okay. Oh, God, please <laughs> spare me, Lord. No, man. <laughs> How many can identify? <laughs> but see, God will put us to the test. Well, I'm sure glad I'm spiritual now, Lord. <laughs> I tell you, I know it's took it a good while, but I'm spiritual. And then all of a sudden that person shows up at the door. But we showed hospitality. We brought her in. We kept her for about two or three weeks. She was looking for a job. We went everywhere over this town trying to help her find a job. We, we fed her. We did everything we could. And she finally, I said, Lord, please show that woman that she, it looks like you ain't going to open no door down here. And just, I don't want to have to tell her to go back to, to yonder, up, up on the hill, way up there. But way, what do you call way up there in Mississippi? Not Mississippi, that's down that way. Up to uh, Burmart or whatever you call that state up there in the north in the mountains. And, there. and finally she says, I don't think, I think I need to go back home. I think I agree. I, amen. I agree with that. I, come on now, you're feeling, but you've got to work through those feelings. Inside you're shouting. <laughs> I said, oh, uh, and Susan said, oh, you don't have to leave. I shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and See, people come to our house, they don't want to leave. And Susan, I tell Susan, honey, if the, remember, if I head to the door, now you follow me and hope that they'll follow. And I open the door and I said, would you like to sit down and have dinner with us? That's the cross, letting the cross cut. See, listen, you don't come into this, you know, happy dabby dabby all the time. I mean, really, it cuts deep, you know. But you hold, God's good to hold me together. But the old man is dying out. That old carnal man that'll get you into so much trouble and everybody else in trouble is dying out and the new life of God is coming forth. See, that's how the cross operates. And you've all probably experienced some of that. Somebody said, I'll drink to that. I believe we will. <laughs> like I say, we'll get rid of this DVD. We'll bury it somewhere. <laughs> you know, you, you laugh at yourself sometimes. Because that's all of us, you know. That is because all of us have that part of the old nature. But see, we, we're walking with God. We're learning to hear His voice. We're learning about the cross. We're learning that there are carnal Christians, there are spiritual Christians, and um, everybody will not have the, conviction, the convictions that you have. Let me say this. Here, let's see. All right, here's a person right here that has com certain convictions about certain, certain things. And here's somebody over here with another convictions of certain things. To him... Eating meat that's been offered to idols is sin. You got that? That's in the scriptures. That's in Romans chapter 14. Yeah, 14. 
This guy over here, he can eat meat that's been offered to idols. He don't think it's sin. And it ain't sin. But to him it is sin. Now watch this. Well, I can eat this meat if I want to. I'm spiritual. I don't care if he's looking or not. Now how many of you know I'm, I'm already sinning? Because I'm not walking in love, even though it's no sin for me, and I can eat it, and my convictions my, doesn't bother my conscience. As far as I'm concerned, there is no idols, there is no, I mean, no other gods, only one God. It's just meat. Put it on my table, and I'm going to eat it. Whether he likes it or not, you're not walking in love. So, I will not eat the meat in front of him. Now when he leaves, bring out the meat, da, 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 da. How many of you understand what I'm talking about? See, that's what we got to learn. It might not offend you, but it might offend your brother. So therefore, you don't live to please yourself. You live to please the other person. But here's the blessing. God will bless you when you bless others. That's not the way of the world. That's not the way of the world. Shoot first and ask questions later. That's the way of the world. So we have to understand that God's ways are much higher than our ways. And when as we begin, as we continue to learn, and it's a learning process, I'll put this young fella over here. Can you imagine he don't believe in eating meat that's been awful to idols? Man, he needs to get his mind renewed. Can I be honest tonight? I see so much in the spirit. Sometimes people come for us, you know, for for counsel. What am I to do, Bob? Now, I know that God answers in many different ways, and there's many different ways we can do. But I see one person bringing up one thing about a person, and they don't realize they're sinning more than the person that they're talking about. Anybody out there besides you all? <laughs> Who are you to judge your brother? That's God's business. Now we discern things, but we discern things. They're weak. They're a weak brother. They got carnality in them. Of course we don't. <laughs> We're spiritual through and through. <clears throat> And we think we're, 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 we're walking Christian-like. See, I see all of that in the Spirit. And some of you too, do too. But you've got to know how to handle it. Love covers a multitude of sins. Now, I can show you in the Bible where it says some folks we need to just get away from. Did you know that? Well, I'll show you that. All right, let me finish reading this. This is good. I've got one more verse over there. All right, here we go. So what are we, what are we to do uh, with our neighbor? Build them up, love them, help them, strengthen them. I want to tell this story about this one woman. Her, her husband didn't want her to go to church. And she said, honey, I love you. I'll fix your dinner and your supper. Don't you worry. But I've given my life to Christ, and I believe that I have to support the church because that's the body of Christ. And I'm not to please myself. I am to please them. So I got to go. Well, if you go, I'm going to lock the door. and You won't be able to come in. And, and uh, she said, honey, whatever, you know, whatever. But I got to go to church, you know. And she, and she was still submissive. She wasn't bad mouthing him or nothing like that. Just simply say, well, honey, I love you. When I get back, I'll fix you supper. So she goes to church. She comes home. The door's locked. So she has the front porch there, so she sleeps on the front porch that night. 
Next morning, he gets up. His wife is not in the house. Oh, that's right. I locked the door. He goes out and opens the front porch. And she wakes up. Oh, good morning, honey. Uh, what do you want for breakfast? And she goes in and fixes breakfast and doesn't say one thing. Bob, did you have to preach that tonight? <laughs> I feel bad as it is. Do we see anybody in the message? <laughs> How many women would have done that? <laughs> but this is a true story. He got so convicted, he gave his life to Christ. And now they both went to church. And stopped by Hardy's and got a Hardy burger. <laughs> now this is another good one I want to tell you. This girl was blind. And she met this young man and he fell in love with her. And he wanted to marry her even though she was blind. And she said, no, I can't marry you unless I have, get some eyes and then I'll marry you. Well, somebody donated some eyes. So they operated and put the new eyes in her and she could see. So her boyfriend came and, and uh, he, she had never seen him. And she looked at him and he was blind. And, she, he, and, she, and, and he said, well, now we can get married. And she said, no, I can't marry somebody's blind. So he, it really hurts him bad. He goes home, but he writes this letter. He says, I'll always love you, and please take care of my eyes. That I donated to you. You know, when I see what's going on in the world, it's okay to get angry. The Bible says be angry, but sin not. And we have to be careful with anger because anger does not work at the righteousness of God. And this is why every day Make sure that we check our lives and we love people, we forgive people. If you're still struggling in that area, speak it out. Lord, I love that person. I bless that person. When I was learning this years ago, there was a woman that hurt me so bad. It took three months to get her dagger out. And then I started blessing her and blessing her and loving her and doing things for her. It took a while to get healed. Sometimes it might take a year. A wounded spirit who can bear. And once your spirit is wounded, you can't bear anything. Now we that are spiritual have to understand what's going on in a person's life. They might not want to be that way. They might, look, they, they might come over to you as, uh, as carnal, but they're just hurt. They just hurt deeply wounds and they can't bear anything. Their spirit's been wounded. We have to discern those things and learn to love and, and to speak healing and pray and Sometimes I got to go all the way back to their daddy and mama. I got to go all the way back while they're in their mother's wound. Because the mother rejected the child, didn't want the child. While she was pregnant. And these are the things that we deal with here at the Shield. Friday night I counseled. Yesterday Susan and me counseled again. It must have been three hours counseling with this couple. We went all the way back. I mean, it's horrible when your mother looks at you and say, I never needed, I never wanted you. And the child already knows it in the spirit. 
because that child, when, it was, when that child was in the womb, they picked that up. This is why when a, child, when a woman is pregnant, she needs to have a renewed mind. She needs to talk to that baby. I used to talk to our children when they were in Susan's womb. I'd rub her belly and I'd say, honey, I just love you. We're looking forward to seeing you. And we just loved our children before they were born. And some, of, some of you out here to hear my voice might have not do that, but you can tell the other next generation to do that. What do you do when, you, when, you, when your daughter gets pregnant and she's not married? You love her. And you love the child. You without sin pass the first stone. Cast the first stone. See, none of us need to open our mouth about anything other than thank you, Jesus. I am what I am. By your grace. Now you've got a renewed mind. Now you love people. You know, God will do the punishment. I can show you the scriptures tonight if you want to go that way. He chastises and he disciplines his children because he loves them. How many know that's in the Bible? It ain't fuzzy fuzzy all the time. Sometimes you're walking around here like this. What's your problem? You got, you know what? No, no, dude. I've been, I've been spanked by the Lord. <laughs> well, I'm telling you, he's doing you good. Uh, for the moment, it seems uh, pretty bad. But afterwards, it yielded the peaceable fruit of righteousness. And you'll be like David. I once went astray before I was spanked. But since I've been spanked, I don't go astray no more. That's all scriptures. All that scripture. I want to hear some of that fuzzy stuff. Well, we all go that way, maybe next Wednesday night. But we're talking because how many want to grow up? You have to understand the process. God's ways are not like our ways. They're far beyond. Now, look what that scripture says. Let each one of us make a practice to please make happy his neighbor. For his good and for his true welfare, to edify him, to strengthen him, and build him up spiritually. Now, we've already read that. That was good that I said it again. Next verse, verse 3. Woo! For Christ did not, what? Please himself, gave no thought to his own interests. I've made my mistakes and sometimes I share them. I had a, Susan and we had a home over in Pierpont, across the Ashley. And that was our first house. We bought it, it was an old house and we remodeled it and moved in and lived in it for six years. It was paid for, we paid it off. And we moved over to Meadowcliff Avenue. That was Susan's dream home, the big brick house over there. $21,000 back in 1961. If I'd have known that, I'd have bought about five of them. <laughs> but we were so poor back then, you couldn't do that. But anyway, when we did sell it, we sold it for 67000 Yeah, 60, I think it was, yeah, 67000 So, you know, and we lived in it 26 years, so that ain't too bad. But now it would be worth uh, probably um, 200000 you know. But we sold this house to an elderly couple. And back in those days, I could have gotten 6% interest because I financed it for this elderly couple. And, and, and they bought it, we signed the papers, but I charged them 3% interest. And that uh, lawyer could not understand. He ain't never seen that before in his whole life. Susan, we've done a lot of things like that in our day. Not bragging, not complaining, but when you let God do the work in you, you just followed the Holy Spirit. So anyway, we sold it, 3% interest. For two years, they, they paid their, their money. He passed away. She got a big insurance, paid us off. A lump sum. But being fair... 
being fair. One of my grandchildren put your car, in other words, you, you give them your deed. What is that thing? You give them your deed and you can borrow money on your car. You know how much interest they charge? Unbelievable. And they did that. She could have never paid the car off. It was so high. I can't remember 20 or 25 or 30 percent. Maybe it might have been 60 percent interest. And I found out about it. So I brought her in. I said, honey, you've got to learn to do business. You've got to walk with the thoughts of God, with the wisdom of God. Now, granddad's going to do something for you. I'm going to pay that thing off. Well, I'll pay you back. <laughs> honey, I love you, but don't lie to your grandpa. That's the old, old story I've heard so many times. But anyway, say God does the work in you and you say, I'm going to get you, I'm, I'm going to, because I may take all of her money just to pay that thing off. So when she, when we get her a new car, we always buy her a car, believe it or not, we buy a car. You know, I know I'll have to throw this tape away, but anyway, <laughs> if you have somebody physically handicapped, you got to take care of them. Are you, anybody listening? Some folks are just spiritually handicapped. I've covered a many of them with love and loved them anyway. They're just spiritually, just like a, you take care of somebody that's physically, you have to take care of them. I've had some folks in my family like that. But see, so as we don't live for ourselves. We live for others. Now, that takes a lot of work of God to do that type of work. But God did it a long time. I would rather be cheated than you be cheated. I'll take the low road and give you the high road. Are you there yet? Anybody seen me in the message? Well, if I can't be in the high road, I don't want to play. A lot of people don't want to play and they quit. Endure hardships as a good soldier of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you're going to reign with Christ, I don't want to say it. Would you say it for me, Willie? If you're going to reign with Christ, you're going to walk with Christ. Suffer. 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 With, well, I want to reign with Christ. Oh, Katie, I tell you what, the cross. See, as we allow the cross to cut, and I've been teaching on that, are you ignorant of the fact that when Christ died, you died with him? See, I want to say this because the time's running out. Some folks don't understand this. The old you, the old spirit that you had, the old you that, that, that was full of Adam, uh, that, that old you, he don't exist no more. If you understand the Bible, have you read the Bible? He died, that old man died. When? When Christ died, the old you died. And the Bible says if any man be in Christ, he's an old creation. Huh? A what? A new creation? You're a new creation. The old you ain't there no more. Until we can get that down in our heart, in our mind, we're going to still try to act like the old, what we used to be. He ain't alive. He died with Christ. Glory to God. Let that get in your spirit, man. It's okay, you want to do the jet bug at this church. If, if you start walking on the ceiling, I might do something about that. But What are you crying about? The dog, he's not there no more. And you're still stepping over it. You remember about the dog? Susan got a big laugh at that the other day. 
The old you, the old Bob, the old Mike, the old Willie, the old, oh, 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 oh. When did you die? At the cross, at the cross. That's what God has done for us. That's why we can get excited and praise him and bless him. The reason that we are in Christ, the Bible says, God put us in Christ. We have our life in Christ because God put us in Christ. We couldn't put ourselves in Christ. He did it for us. Now, just like the sanctifying work, well, I'm going to do better next year. No, you ain't. For about a week, you fall back in the same pattern. How many of us have tried that? New year comes. What are you going to do about, about the new year? Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lose some weight. And I, and I start swelling up. <laughs> I go to bed at night thinking about ice cream. Oh, my goodness. If I could just have a piece of Mrs. Campbell's cake. I tell Susan, you see, we got ice cream in this house. You see Willie coming along, don't let him in the house. He'll sniff that, he'll sniff that out, right? I just, he knows he's welcome to it all. No, you won't do better until you learn the principle that is God that's going to change you from the inside out. Religion changes people from the outside. Oh, they perform greatly. They look like, man, they really spiritual. It's an outward training. Nothing has changed on the inside. Whitewash on the outside. Inside, they are cold, cold-hearted. They don't love God. They don't love their neighbor. You mess with me and I'll... <laughs> but when you come to understand... It's by God's grace that, and more grace that helps us to overcome those evil tendencies. <sighs> Let's finish that. For Christ did not please himself, gave no thought to his own interest, but as it is written, there it is again. What verse is it? They don't know. So they say, for it is written, the approaches and abuses of those who approach and abuse you fell on me. Who's me there? Who's me? That's Jesus. See the capital letter? Me. Everything that people say about us, it all falls on Jesus. He took care of it all. Me is not in the picture anymore. The quicker you could get me out of the equation. Man, you're talking about living. Woo! Glory to God. Let me tell you this thing, this story. And this is a true story back in the Old Testament. Christ's time. If somebody killed somebody and they found out that this person did it, they would take the corpse, this body of corpse, and tie it on to this person. And they would carry that dead person around. Now how many of you know about two days? <laughs> and the person would go around and say, who will deliver me from this body of sin? Who will deliver me from this body of sin? Who will deliver me from this body of sin? And nobody can touch that person because the law was, they'll get it. How many Christians are still carrying that body of stinking body of sin? That corpse, that old man still, and they're hiding out. And I say, Jesus did it at Calvary. Jesus took that old man and just boom, he ain't no more. But see, they're still stepping over the old man and he ain't there. How I many you know that's in the Bible? Right, you got it. Romans chapter 7. And you go down to chapter 8. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. Who has delivered me from this body of corpse? Thank God Jesus has. That's why I get happy. That's why I want to shout. 
That's why I want to run around the church and holler. Don't we understand what the Lord has done? Oh, when we do, we'll see revival like we've never seen before. Because your inner man, you will sense it and you will know it. Free at last from that old corpse. Free at last from that old Bob Tilton. The minute you look at him in the wrong way, he'll spit in your face. Now, of course, some of you weren't that way. You throw bricks. <laughs> How many love me tonight? All right, love me a little bit. Got five minutes more. I, I hope you can take another five minutes. All right. Now, the last verse is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. All right, let's get to chapter 1. There we go. All right, 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Let's start with verse 17 and 18. For Christ the Messiah sent me out not to baptize. Now, the Apostle Paul is talking. He tells us in the scriptures that he baptized a couple of folks, but he forgot. But his main focus was, and he tells us, but to evangelize by preaching the glad tithing, the gospel, and that not with verbal eloquence. Paul, many people think he had a speech, what would you call it, a speech impediment, like Moses did, like I do. Okay. Certain word, now I'm not Paul, <laughs> I'm Bob, okay. Certain words I cannot pr uh, pronounce, but it don't stop me. If I said them anyway, you couldn't understand them anyway, could you? <laughs> Most of you probably could. All right, <clears throat> look, he, not with verbal eloquence, uh, ev uh, he, help me. Right, thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> eloquence. eloquence. There we go. Eloquence. Lest the cross of Christ should be deprived of force and empty of its power and rendered vain, fruitless, void of value and of no effect. Have you ever seen somebody up there teaching and preaching and you say, what in the world are they saying? I mean, well, now you know what happened, but you see, it was round around this way, but, it, but, but nevertheless, this guy was right. But I'll tell you one thing, it never happened to me. <laughs> Would you run that by one more time? <laughs> Forget it, I don't even think you can do it. Use all those elegant words. Our dictionary, uh, dictionary, <laughs> Our dictionary wore out over there. All right, Susan, so look at that word. Up. What are they talking about? Okay, go to the next verse. Real quick, like time's running fast. I got to quit. Here we go. For the story, for the story, the message of the cross is sheer assurity and folly to those who are perishing. And on their way to perdition, that means hell, by the way. But to us who are being saved, it is the manifestation of the power of God. And when I preach the cross, Christ died on his cross and bore our penalty, bore our sins. Everything that was against us was laid upon him. And then God took our old man, the old Bob Tilton, and put us in Christ. And when he nailed Christ to the cross, he nailed old Bob Tilton to the cross. And that old man was buried and doesn't exist no more. And when he raised me, when he raised Christ, he raised us up to walk in the newness of life. Brand new folks. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation, a new recreated. Let me tell you something. The cross is an exchange. I'm going to say that again. The cross is an exchange. We exchanged our old man, died with Christ, and God gave us the life of Christ. And now we're brand new creations. Now the problem is in our soul and our uh, fleshly appetites. That's what we have to battle. 
because these bodies are not saved yet. But one day, they're going to be glorified. And we're going to fly away. Amen. But now we get into the scriptures and God tells us how to overcome the world, the flesh, which is also the carnal mind, and what else? Devil. And the devil. That's the battle. Say, I'm a new creation. There was an exchange at the cross. I left my old man there. When they put Christ in the, in the grave, in the, in the tomb, I was put in there. You were too. We were all put there. We were all in Christ. And when Christ was raised from the dead, behold, a brand new Bob never existed before. This is why we're called a new creation. We are a new creation. The old creation has been crucified, buried. And we are a brand new creation. Now God says, I want you to get your minds renewed. Get in this. Believe it. Memorize the scriptures. I encourage you to get a pad. And every uh, verse of scripture that God makes alive to you, write it down. And bring it to church. And share it with us. I could spend hours just verse by verse. It's all been, it's just awesome when it's made alive to you. If I go before the Lord, I won't have my Bible like this. I'm in love with God. And I'm in love with his word. It's okay to read different books. Read this one. This is God's word. Listen, it has power. Jesus said, my word is life and peace. Don't worry about understanding. You rely upon the Holy Spirit to illuminate your, the eyes of your heart. Our hearts have eyes. It says that in uh, Ephesians chapter, I think it's 3, verse 17 right in there. Paul prays, may the eyes of your heart be illuminated. And you say, wow, I see! I was once blind, but now I see. Boom! By the Spirit of God. And all your striving... All of my striving, which I did for years, until the light turned on. I'm so glad that God has given us the Holy Spirit. Yes. He's our strengthener. He's our God. He's our teacher. He's our comforter. He is our power. He is our life. He is our everything. And he lives right in you and me. Amen. Father, we thank you now for your word. And we thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Holy Spirit, any way we have offended you or grieved you this day, we repent and we're sorry. Help us to walk now in the light. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Just follow the Holy Spirit. Learn of him.